हेलो स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल स्टडी द रिकंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ अ सैंपल सिग्नल इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव स्टडीड दैट हाउ अ कंटिन्यूअस सिग्नल वाज कन्वर्टेड इनटू अ डिस्क्रीट टाइम सिग्नल यूजिंग सैंपलिंग नाउ व्हाट वी विल डू वी विल कन्वर्ट दैट सैंपल सिग्नल इनटू द ओरिजिनल सिग्नल अगेन गॉट इट सो इफ यू वांट टू स्टडी दैट व्हाट व्हाट हैपेंड इन द सैंपलिंग प्रोसेस देन यू कैन गो टू द लेक्चर i have uh, given the link of that lecture in description box and study okay then you can understand this concept very clearly so now i am giving a small introduction to the concept of sampling here and then i will move forward for the reconstruction process part so now one signal xt is given to the sampler okay and with the help of this function ct it is multiplied with xt and then it has given sampled signal got it and that sampled signals frequency domain is representation was something like that 1 by ts summation i squared to minus infinity plus infinity x of omega minus and omega s i have derived everything in the previous lecture so now and ct ct can be represented like summation n squared to minus infinity plus infinity del of t minus and ts this expression represent a pulse strain that i had explained in the previous lecture so now now we will start the reconstruction part <coughs> look at the signal as omega it must be look like this i have represented here in frequency domain what i want to get i want to get the sig the signal x of omega and you can see here that s omega is of amplitude 1 by ts but x of omega is of 1 now many replicas are available of this x omega having amplitude 1 by ts and i want to obtain one replica only and that is to having uh, an amplitude of 1 only so what i have to do the simplest way is i will multiply it by a rectangular pulse signal okay that is also known as ideal filter okay so i have taken a function here h of omega okay that is having amplitude ts and it is a rectangular pulse from minus omega m to plus omega if i will multiply this with s omega then you can see this amplitude 1 by ts will be multiplied by ts and it will become 1 after cancelling out t and t ts and ts both got it and it will give an amplitude of 1 here look 1 here and the same shape because the all the thing all the values are ts and the same thing will be scaled by ts and it will give the function x of omega look at this function yes or no so you will get a frequent uh, you will get uh, x of omega means original signal after multiplying s of omega with the function h of omega got it so we can find out a reconstructed signal x r of omega by multiplying s of omega with a function h of omega if i talk about time time domain so you know by the property of convolution that multiplication in time domain represents convolution in frequency domain and multiplication in frequency domain represents convolution in time domain means it reverses time do multiplication and convolution so what will happen here uh, we are having multiplication in frequency domain then we will if we will take the signal in time domain x of t then we will get the convolution of these both signal means multiplication is converted into convolution in time domain got it now let's move forward we have to find out h of t here as of as of t we will find out by multiplying x t into c t it is simple but we have to find out h of t means inverse fourier transform of h of t is what inverse fourier transform of h omega And h omega is what? H omega is what? A rectangular pulse. In inverse Fourier transform, you must have find out the 
Fourier transform of inverse Fourier transform of a rectangular pulse and it was a sync function it was a sync function I'm just giving an explanation means I'm not explaining the derivation I'm just telling uh, explaining how we will get the expression for time domain or inverse Fourier transform for this rectangular pulse first the amplitude of that sync function will be s of uh, sorry uh, t of s whatever will be the amplitude of h omega that will appear here t s then sync function sine of sine of look at the uh, range of this rectangular rectangular pulse minus omega m to plus omega m means to omega m so half of that means omega m we will take omega m into t divided by pi into t this is the sync function or inverse Fourier transform of ht I will put this value in the expression xr t that will become st st is what uh, uh, summation n is equals to minus infinity to plus infinity basically when we will multiply in time domain na, then you will get a sampled values means uh, at every value of n you will get the x of n t only on the discrete value means n is equals to 0 1 minus 1 minus 2 okay so we can write it as x of n t s x of n t s into del of t minus and t s got it into h t h t is what h t we have find out t s sin omega m t divided by pi t okay in sampling theorem what we have discussed that omega s one more thing i will include here omega s is greater than equals to 2 omega m it must be greater than equals to 2 omega m for the proper reconstruction of the signal got it suppose here this guard band was zero means if this condition will not be followed then it will be it will be overlapping like this okay and when we have to find out the reconstructed signal by multiplying this then you can see that signal will be distorted here this exact same signal you cannot get okay if this condition is not followed means this guard band is not available here got it so what we will do we will take the limiting value limiting value means just omega s is equals to 2 omega m suppose we have taken the sampling frequency that is just equal to the uh, 2 omega m okay so now we can write omega s is what 2 pi by t s t s is time period then 2 omega m is what omega m is uh, we will keep it as it is and this 2 will be cancelled out by this 2 now uh, omega m is equal to pi by t s okay so now we will do something here you can see here this is t s and pi okay if i will remove this t s from here and we will, i will multiply it by this is it representing the same expression yes or no according to me yes now x r t will be equal to summation n is equals to minus infinity to plus infinity x of n t s x of n t s ok del of t minus n t s now it has been sine of omega m t omega m t m t divided by now look at this pi by t s here you can see pi by t s is equal to omega m 2, two is uh, cancelled out by this 2 then pi by t s will be equal to omega m so in place of this we can write omega m into t okay and by the shifting by the shifting property of impulse function means if you will and one more thing i have missed here this will be convolution okay as t convolved with ht this will be convolution of ht okay and this will be convolution okay let me write it downside to mention here this convolution now you will you must include it that's convolution sine of omega m t 
divided by pi sorry not pi this has become omega m you can see from here pi by ts is equal to omega m omega m into t now you can see by the property of convolution of impulse function means you can uh, I, I have told you earlier also suppose one function is there f of t okay f of t if it is convolved with del of t minus and ts okay then the result will be f of t minus and ts okay by this property of impulse function what we will write here you can see that del of t minus and ts is convolved with look this is i will not convolve with it okay i will convolve with this function only because this is the function of time t okay so i will convolve this function impulse function with this uh, function i have got the inverse fourier transform of h of t so now you can see by, by convolving it with impulse train i will remove i will replace the value of t value of t with the expression given here got it so you can see summation n is equals to minus infinity to plus infinity x of n t s and del of now del of t minus n t will disappear and here sin omega m t is given and in place of t look in place of t t minus n t s is put okay so i will also replace this t by t minus n t s so omega m t in place of t i will put t minus n t s again divided by omega m t minus n t s i have replaced t with t minus n t s got it with the help of property now you can see this will become okay uh, first write this signal okay this part uh, whatever derivation has been done i need some space so now i will uh, move further uh, with the uh, with these steps here so xrt xrt let me uh, write one more step here summation n is equals to minus infinity to plus infinity x of n t s into now look here this will become omega m into t and when i will multiply this omega m in n t s then it will become sine of omega m t sine of omega m t minus n t s omega m divided by omega m t minus n t s omega m okay so look again from here if i will put this t here then pi upon t s is equal to omega m then pi will be equal to omega m into t s pi will be equal to from here omega m into t s and this value omega m into t s i will replace by pi so look here omega m into t s i will replace it by pi got it now here also it is given omega m into t s i will also replace it with pi how i am able to replace it using sampling theorem okay i have taken nyquist rate condition this omega s sampling frequency i have taken as 2 omega m okay and from that frequency from that condition i have find out these replacements got it so now we can write it here xrt is equals to xrt is equals to summation n is equals to minus infinity 2 plus infinity 
x of n t s x of n t s sine of sine of omega m t minus n pi divided by omega m t minus n pi okay now you can see here that this function x and t s these samples are interpolated by a sing function this these this is what these are the samples n is equals to 0 n is equals to 1 n is equals to 2 the sample of x okay these are in these are interpolated by this sing function okay so we can say this technique is an ideal interpolation technique of reconstruction of a sample signal got it so now i will tell you what does it mean look at this this was suppose xt xt is nothing but this thing suppose okay and it is having samples n is equals to 0 minus 1 minus 2 then n is equals to 1 n is equals to 2 got it and this is x2 you can see here all of these samples okay after uh, converting into the discrete time signal okay we were getting only samples okay these samples now from these samples look, look at here let me create it minus 2 minus 1 then 0 okay this is 1 this is 0 and this is n is equals to 2 okay so now you can see that from these samples i have to reconstruct this signal so what i will do for each sample, for each n is equals to 0, suppose n is equals to 0, x of 0 will be multiplied by this sing function. Okay, x of 0 is will be multiplied by this sing function. You can study about sing function, okay, then you will understand what is the shape of sing function. I am just making it here, okay. So now at x is equals to 0, suppose x is equals to n is equals to 0, sorry, n is equals to 0, the sample is this, x of 0 is this line okay over this i have interpolated this sing function sing function will be n is equals to 0 means sin omega t upon uh, sin omega t upon omega t okay so this will be like this one peak here then side lobes decreasing okay like this side lobes decreasing okay now here we can write it means each sample signal is represented by a sing function okay so ideally when we will combine these all the pulses all the sing function then we will get this signal reconstructed okay this signal we will get reconstructed so this uh, this method is known as ideal interpolation method okay if you have any doubt in all the derivation and anything in this lecture then you can put your doubts in comment i will try to resolve them